Hi Compulsive Quilters. Today I'm looking back at the Sausalito quilt and when I was editing this video I realized that I was missing a section on sewing the convex to the concave curves. So that is what this video is about. Hang on. So I went back with a completely different fabric and this will be uh, the exact same process. It's just I've already used up all my fabric for the other one. One of the things that may immediately become obvious to you when you have all of your pieces cut out and prepared to sew your last little bit is that these don't seem to match up. And you can see that this piece looks larger than this piece. And where this joins together, this piece looks larger than this piece. So it is all gonna to come together and there's just a few things that you need to keep in mind about this. So when you join your pieces together, when you've got a concave piece and a convex case piece, you're going to want to find the center of each of those pieces. So it's very simple. You just fold these, and this will be your center. You can mark that with a pen. And then you're going to fold your next piece and find the center. I'm giving it a little crease here at the bottom. When you found the center of both pieces, then you pin right at the center. Find your outside edge and pin so just as you would want these to come together. Pin your second outside edge. Then you're going to want to come back in and pin halfway in between them. So right here it's going to look like there are a lot of pins in this. But the reason that I've done this is because I want to find any places that pucker. And where it puckers, like on this one, on this particular one, it's on the bottom side. So when you're feeding this through the machine, you, I generally, if I have a piece like this is smooth and another piece like this that has a lot of seams, I usually will keep my smooth piece down. But the other reason is because the feed dogs will help take out up this little bit of slack that's in the bottom. So that will work out better for you. So notice I've pinned evenly across any places that pucker, I've already kind of looked at and tried to work it in in an even fashion. So I pin here, pin here, and then I come to the center again, and then I put some outside pins. And this kind of pinning will hopefully bring it from one side to the other without any problems. The other thing that I want to talk about is when you look at this side, so it's got a lot going on here, and there are all these seams, and they're all, they're all flat where they join up. But as I'm sewing, one of the things that I want to keep in mind is where my points are. So I don't want to, as I'm sewing, happen to sew over my points. So I will keep this piece up because it will show where all my points are. And I will be very mindful not to, not to take one of these off because I've went to so much trouble to get them. So I've sewn this one and unpinned it and then just to lay it out. And I've got pretty close to the edges. So I, I'm pretty pleased with that. So there's not a reason to worry because these pieces don't come out. It's just a matter of practice. Um, for this one, I used a quarter inch seam allowance, but I did bring it out a couple of clicks on my machine. I think it's like a millimeter at a time. So I probably brought it out a couple of millimeters on my seam allowance um, just to give a little bit extra on the edge. I noticed that right here that I lost one point. This doesn't bother me. I know that your eye corrects for all of these mistakes when you're looking at a quilt later. So that is not going to be something that bothers me. The others are, the others are pretty close, but like I said, there is uh, very little as far as the seam allowance goes on the edges. I'm not making a competition quilt, so I'm not too worried about this. Now, for the other one, the method is just exactly the same. You're going to turn this in like this, and you're going to find your center, which is 
for all intents and purposes right at the edge of the seam. And you're going to pin that and then you're going to also fold this in and find your center and then you're going to join these two pieces in exactly the same way. So the same process here. I found my center. I've pinned that, these two pieces together. You have your, your convex and your concave piece. And so you hit the center, you come to the outside, you line it up just like you want your block to line up so that you have like straight to straight here. And the same on this end, you have straight to straight. Then you're gonna come into the center and you're going to pin and then you're going to pin again trying to evenly distribute any pucker that may happen on this. Now one thing that I would normally mention is I don't pin a lot and I actually prefer glue most of the time but because I am anticipating that there will be some pucker here I'm going to use the pins because the glue would be just too definite of a line if I'm trying to have the feed dogs pull in any of the fabric as I'm sewing. So as you can see, the process is just the same. And now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. I've got everything that I'm satisfied. It will probably come out exactly like I'm hoping. So I want to take it over to the sewing machine. And like I said, I want to, um, I will probably flip this over just as I did the other piece so that I can watch my points and not lose them in the, in the sewing process because that is really the point of doing this New York beauty block is to get these really lovely precise points and I don't want to lose them right here at the last of the block. So while I'm talking about bringing it over to the sewing machine, one of the things that I find helpful is that this particular sewing machine has a, um, has a, I've got a foot for it that I bought and I don't know if you can see but it has a little ledge right here. So that is what I'm watching as I'm sewing. And I will sew along, so you don't wanna watch your needle so much, except when you get over here to a point and then you wanna make sure that your stitch line comes above your point or as close to your point as possible. But right here, what you're watching is the edge of your fabric that you get a nice, you know, you want to bring it along here. If you have any places that you need to manually adjust as you go along, you adjust them. But you, um, and another thing to mention, if you need to stop and turn your fabric a little bit, it is good to have your needle in the down position. And that way you can pivot and it will, you won't lose your place as you're going along. So watch your needle, keep it in the down position if you need to turn it or if you need to adjust. Or right here, there's a lot of fabric bulk that's about to come under my presser foot. So what I want to do is I will stop in the pivot and I will raise my foot and then just by lowering it, it will get that bulk more evenly under the foot. And because my needle is in the down position, it has, um, it's in the down position. The bulk has come under more fully by just raising and lowering the presser foot over it. And everything has stayed in position. So that is one of the things that you wanna keep in mind when you're doing this. That didn't matter because I was holding it in place when I raised it, raised the needle by accident. But it does happen. So the needle is down and I'm just adjusting for a little bit of bulk so that it goes over a little bit smoother. And it's just riding right along the edge of this particular foot. Slipped out 
just as I was getting to the end. So I'll just reposition it and bring it onto the edge. We'll see how it goes. This is the specialty foot that I was talking about earlier. The guide that is on it is right here, and this is what your fabric will ride along the inside of it. It'll feed in here and ride along that guide. This one is marked for a quarter of an inch, and I actually have a quarter of an inch um, foot that I use sometimes, but it has a little bitty opening right here for a needle. This one allows me to adjust my needle to the right a little bit. And that little bit of adjustment to the right lets me get something that is a little bit closer. Well, it's not a perfect quarter of an inch. It's a little bit on the inside. So it's moving toward an eighth of an inch, although this one doesn't allow me quite that much. But it allows me to get into where I need to be for uh, for this block so that once I figure out exactly where I want my needle to ride so that I can get those inside points I have that advantage um, it's a great foot I use it for piecing all the time and it almost makes piecing mindless because you as long as you can watch this edge you know exactly where you need to be when you're piecing I've given this a quick finger press like this it seems to want for the seam to go to the outside. Now normally I would press to the dark, but because this seam seems to want to radiate in that direction, that's what I'm going with. Looks pretty darn close as far as everything joining up. I am very pleased with that. I can't complain. So I will take this over. Oh, there's a better contrast and you can see what's going on here. Not such a busy fabric as my ironing board. So everything has matched up pretty well and that is how you get it. One of the things that you're looking for of course is these nice beautiful points and you want to not lose them. So that is how you complete this block. What you can see here is that the edges have lined up and they're lined up here. This means that you're not having to do a whole lot of trim work. So what looks like it won't go together actually goes together very nicely in the finished product. So have some confidence. Just use pins if you need to, and this will turn out to be a great block for you. To get my latest tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell.